this interview is uh, for the Brazilian magazine called uh, U UFO. Uh, and I was invited by AJ, um, the editor of that magazine, to interview you for a future event where you, you are coming to Brazil to present I see. Uh, your message about the T contact uh, reality. Um, so I would like to ask you if you, uh, as a first question, if you could uh, ask, actually just before that, I just wanted to say that I have been uh, studying your your books for for a few years now. So some of the questions are going to be from a perspective of someone that people that are coming to to your material uh, uh, right now, and some of the questions will be more uh, maybe detailed or specific because. Uh, of studying this for, 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 for some time. I see, good. So I would like you to, to uh, I would like to ask you to, if you could introduce yourself to us and, and tell us a bit more about your, uh, your life before this whole ET and UFO phenomenon. Well, my life comes in two different parts. The part before this whole reality of spiritual study, life in the universe, visitation, contact, and so forth. And my life after all that began and how that's emerged. I grew up in California in a very nice town called Berkeley, and I went to the university there. And after the university, I worked for a time as a special educator for the blind, working with young adolescents. But I realized that was not going to be my my lifelong career. So I set on a, another kind of journey, more of a spiritual journey, um, to find what I really was here to do because I felt something was important was going to be given to me later in life. And I had to prepare for that, even though at that time I didn't know what that was. So indeed, I began to teach spiritual practice and inner guidance. I did that for seven years. And in 1983, um, I began to receive a contact with a powerful angelic force and presence that changed my life completely. Uh, the most powerful experience I've ever had, really. And part of the gift of that contact and the new message teaching for the world that would ensue from that contained a vast teaching about the reality and the spirituality of life in our local universe. And what we would need to know to prepare for that contact and for our emergence into a larger arena of intelligent life, uh, which the new message calls the greater community. So in 1989, I received the text Steps to Knowledge, um, a vast spiritual preparation with an ancient history given to our world for the first time. It's here in part to prepare us for our emergence into this greater community of life and to lay out the steps of development that we would need to be able to become citizens of this larger panorama of life in which we've always lived, yet about which we know nothing at all. And then 10 years later, I received the first set of briefings from the Allies of Humanity, uh, a group of um, observers from the universe around us who have come to give us their report about the visitation that is occurring in our world, what it means, how we must regard it, and how we must prepare for our future life in a universe uh, that we know, again, nothing about. So the Allies of Humanity briefings was really another kind of teaching for me to receive beyond the new message teaching, which has been my focus for the last 36 years and uh, plays an important but supportive role in the new message teaching for the world, which overall is to prepare us for a new world reality and for our future and destiny in a universe full of intelligent life. So here I am today. Thank you, Marshall. So uh, I would like to ask you, how was your experience of receiving this, uh, this new, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you, you were not thinking about ETs or, or life in the universe too much before that. So how was it for you to receive this, this amazing um, new understanding? 
Well, interestingly, this was not a focus of mine really before my greater spiritual work began. But within that spiritual work was a real focus on the meaning of life in the universe, the realities of life in the universe. So I was being prepared for the Allies briefings uh, way in advance. In fact, in 1994, I received the vast text called Greater Community Spirituality, which really lays out the spirituality of advanced races in the universe and how they coordinate with one another and what kind of gifts they can give to us as a young emerging race uh, merging into this larger arena of life. So I knew some things, but I didn't know much about the visitation that's occurring in the world specifically. So the allies of humanity were called here to give their testimony, their report. They actually call it a report, given in a series of briefings, um, to alert us to the reality of this visitation, which they call an intervention. They distinguish it from a visitation calling it an intervention, why it's here, what it means, how we must prepare, and why it is occurring, what is taking place. So the Allies briefings was a big confrontation for me. Um, I was kind of resistant to receiving uh, a communication from physical beings in the universe. My grounding was in, in a really a spiritual domain, but what they provided was so gracious and so supportive and so important in terms of its perspective and information that uh, once I began to receive it, I, I immediately could see its vital importance, particularly as people were reporting ever more experiences of contact. Um, lots of theories are being promoted about this, very hopeful theories, of course, uh, lots of points of view, perspectives, and so forth. In fact, people were receiving teachings from other entities in the universe and have beginning at that time and have been increasingly since. So the Allies of Humanity briefings, I believe, stands out as something very significant and authentic uh, beyond anything else I've seen. So uh, it's very important. And the first set of briefings were given over the course of one year. Uh, the second and third were given in one gigantic installment. And there's a fourth set of briefings uh, that were given very recently, um, which we will be presenting in the near future. And I should begin by saying that the Allies of Humanity briefings are all free online. The entire briefings are given on the Allies of Humanity website. I want people to have full access to this, to see this information. And of course, uh, people are um, translating the Allies briefings increasingly into many, many languages in the world. So. Their message is beginning to work its way out into that big, vast world we live in. And it couldn't come at a better time, frankly. So I had to prepare for the Allies briefings, and the New Message teachings really did that for me on a spiritual foundation. But the intervention is something that's a real physical event. It's an event of nature, because intervention is part of nature. I mean, even out in the natural world, species are intervening upon one another. And in the history of humanity, I mean, cultures and nations have intervened upon one another. We know that has been dramatically portrayed in the last few centuries. Uh, so intervention is a part of nature. It's not a, an unnatural thing, but it's a very dangerous and hazardous thing. And we need to look at this very, very objectively. And when I say objectively, we have to look at it without wanting anything from it. This is a very important point, and I'm sure I will speak more about this as we go along. Um, to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, you cannot have preferences about what you're looking at. It's a fundamental spiritual teaching. And in this case, it's particularly important because if we cannot do this, we will not see this picture clearly. We will not recognize the greatest event in human history, which is our contact with intelligent life in the universe, and what that will mean for our present and future reality. So my journey was a long one. But by that time, I was really becoming aware that we live in a larger arena of intelligent life a physical arena, and that we've always lived in this arena. And we've come of age now 
to our technological development, our social development, our world integration to the extent that it's happened, uh, has brought us to this threshold of standing, you know, at the entrance to this larger arena of life. And the intervention that's occurring is bringing that reality to us in the most powerful way possible. Could you tell us a, a, a bit about how was your experience of receiving the, the, this communication from the Allies? How, how, how did this uh, come about? Well, it was very different from the angelic contact experience, which is a massive experience of presence, an overwhelming experience of presence. It took me years to be able to be in this presence for anything more than a few moments. But the Allies briefings was a communication that was established by the angelic presence. It's not happening through any kind of technological or mechanical means, which means it cannot be um, inter interfered, it cannot be interpreted, you know, cannot be um, uh, interrupted in any way. So I was hearing a voice sounding like from a very long distance. And it was a very long distance happening from millions of miles away. But the communication was coming through a spiritual channel to me. And I was hearing it. Very different from the angelic presence. It's like a long distance phone call where the other person's voice is very faint online. But their words are very clear. So I feel that I have received their message very, very authentically and clearly. And um, it's also given with great repetition so that we can have the time to come to grips with it and to understand it more deeply. And since then, I have had these other encounters, very rare, um, where the next briefings were to be given, often years apart, uh, without any contact in between just the briefings themselves. And within the briefings, the allies do tell us something about themselves, why they're here, and what their presence in our world or near our world means, because they're not on our planet. They're not visiting us physically down here on the ground. Um, they're functioning as spies on our behalf to observe a great event happening in our midst that we're barely aware of. Have, have they uh, revealed anything about the, their uh, races or where they come from? And, uh, and are you saying that they're not here on Earth? Um, why are they not here? Well, because they have a policy of non-intervention. What we need from them is their wisdom. We need them to teach us about what life is like beyond our borders, because we don't know. And in the absence of having real wisdom and knowledge about this, we fill in that picture with our own fears and desires. We paint a picture of life in the universe to meet our needs or, or appetite or our preferences. But we do not have a picture of the reality. So they do not give their names and their origins because they're here in secret. They're here, inter, they're here acting uh, as observers, spies, if you will. And so they have to protect their identity. They have to remain hidden. And out of view of those races who are here interfering in human affairs, manipulating human affairs, overtaking people's lives, and so forth. So their discretion is very important for their success. You, you mentioned the word uh, intervention, that we are um, undergoing uh, an AT intervention. Um, can you tell us a, a bit about, uh, tell us a bit more about that? Uh, what, is, what is their purpose? Why are they here? What they are they seeking here? Okay. Well, first, it's important for me to distinguish the visitation from an intervention. In a visitation, we know who is visiting. We know why they're visiting. We have some kind of relationship with them that we're aware of. We're aware of their intentions. We've established some degree of trust or confidence in them. Uh, they respect our boundaries. They act graciously in our midst. They do not interfere in our affairs or seek to learn our secrets. Just like a guest to your home. They're a guest to your home because you recognize them. You're willing to have them visit you. Uh, 
you have enough trust and confidence in their presence to allow that to happen. But what we're dealing with meets none of those criteria. There are forces here that are here without our permission. They're not revealing who they are or why they're here. They're acting at will within our own space, with our own environment. They're carrying out very dangerous activities and harmful activities in the world today and have been for decades now. And their overall plan and purpose here, they're not revealing. Meanwhile, they're sowing seeds of persuasion to convince those people whom they contact that they're here for a benefit or recommend or represent our saviors in some way, or can only they only they can give us what we cannot give ourselves and so forth. So there's a massive pacification program going on uh, as part of the intervention itself, a program of persuasion, a program of um, submission. Something is happening of, that will affect the destiny of every person on earth, but they're not revealing anything about themselves. And this is the biggest conspiracy there could possibly be on planet earth, that we have a force demonstrating greater technology than we have who understand life in the universe, who are here for their own purposes, which they will not reveal, who are working in secret in a very deceptive manner. So we cannot consider this a visitation if we have any kind of understanding of what is happening in the world today or how this is manifesting in our midst. Could you tell us about uh, what they are seeking here? Why, why Earth? Why what we have that they, they, they are spending so much effort to, to come here? Well, our planet is what the Allies of Humanity call a gem in the universe. A magnificent planet of biological diversity, of temperate climate, of immense resources, um, highly habitable if you can breathe the atmosphere, a biological storehouse in the universe of barren worlds. I mean, there are not many Earth-like planets out there compared to the number of celestial bodies that actually exist. So, I mean, it's, it's like a gold mine in the middle of a desert. The universe is a vast desert. So, they're here searching for what all advanced societies search for resources, worlds of strategic importance, and other societies that they can use for themselves for their own benefit. Very similar to what happens here on Earth. I think many people want to feel that the universe is a better place, that within technology comes enlightenment, higher ethics, higher standards, but we know from my experience here on Earth that is not the case at all. So we're dealing with reality here, but just on a vastly greater scale. Many more different participants. A non-human universe where freedom is rare, and where power is exerted in many different ways that we don't really understand. And that power is being exerted upon the Earth at this time increasingly with each passing day. So they want what we have, a rich, beautiful planet. But they can't breathe the atmosphere. They cannot live here. They cannot survive here on the surface. And that is why they need us as part of that resource. People often want to say, well, if they're not attacking us, they must be our friends. They must be friendly. You know, they're not attacking the earth, they're not waging war upon us. But really, that's how we think of conquest. But to an advanced society, you want to preserve all the assets of a world that you're interested in, and even the population of that world that you're going to need to help you, to work for you. So, clearly you're not going to destroy the value of the earth, or the value or existence of humanity, which is the only intelligent race that can live on this surface. So again, a greater community education now has to begin to take the place of wishful thinking or 
are what we see in movies, how we want this to be for us. It's a confrontation with reality. It's a confrontation with nature. It's a confrontation with ourselves. Can we grow up enough to participate in this universe of intelligent life? Because if we don't establish unity and cooperation amongst us sufficiently, we will be supplanted. We will be overtaken. Not by fierce or violent conquest, but by very subtle means of persuasion. For the reins of power gradually are given over to others who we do not know. Can you tell us a, a bit about uh, the, the Allies book? It mentions that the intervention here on Earth is basically composed of uh, uh, collectives, right? Can you uh, explain to us what are the collectives and wh how do they differ from our current reality on Earth and how, uh, if it's going to be a good thing if we become part of them? Or can you contrast that for us? That would not be a good thing. Well, basically, these are small groups of resource explorers that work for larger powers. And they work in such a way they don't have to follow the rules of engagement that are established in our region of space, which the Allies of Humanity briefings and the New Message teachings both reveal to us for the first time. We would have no way of knowing that these things exist otherwise. And basically, conquest is not allowed in this part of space because we live in a highly inhabited region of space where there is a lot of commerce undertaken. And so war is suppressed and violent conquest is not allowed. So you have resource explorers who go out and find things for larger powers. And they're not military groups, but they're very powerful in terms of their power in the mental environment, their power of persuasion, the power of inducement. And we're very vulnerable to these things because we don't really have in enough people that core knowledge within us that makes us impervious to persuasion, the thing that makes us so grounded in the truth that we cannot be deceived. And this power lives with all of us, and I'll be talking about this as we go forward, and how important this is for our own preparation, for the survival of humanity, um, for the well-being of everyone here. So we're not dealing with military forces. This is not a Star Wars kind of reality. That's a human fiction. We're dealing with how worlds are contacted and how persuasion is undertaken in a situation in our world such as it is. It's how emerging worlds such as our own, emerging races such as our own, are initially contacted and cultivated and directed so they can become part of these larger networks of trade, which is something we do not want. In contrast to this, there exist free nations who over time have established their insulation in the universe, their freedom from these large networks of trade, um, so they can function independently, so they can have degrees of freedom that the greater technological powers do not offer their citizens. But to be free in the universe, you have to become wise about the universe. You have to be careful. And we'll be talking about that through the course of our interview today. Uh, why, why are they here now? And, and um, can you explain why this is happening now? What about the visitations from the past in human history? Well, the Earth has been visited since before human history I mean, because it is a world of resources. It's a world where many races cannot breathe the atmosphere, or even survive in the biological contamination of the world. Remember, world, races that travel in space are living in sterile environments. So to come into a world reality where there are billions and tens of millions of different kinds of organisms is a real biological hazard for a visiting race. Um, so certainly we've been visited for samples of resources for longer than anyone knows. A long time. Remember, we're a young race in the universe. Space travel existed a million years ago. <laughs> we're like little kids coming into the big city. We don't know anything about it, and we need to know about it. 
We're coming here at this time for a number of important reasons. One is we've created an infrastructure, worldwide commerce, communications, that they can utilize for themselves. They don't have to come here and build all that. We've built much of it that they can already use. And their presence here has grown since World War II with the advent of nuclear weapons and nuclear power. Because that shows a technological threshold uh, which would make intervention more difficult in the future if it was cultivated properly for humanity, if we cultivated it properly for ourselves. So this is the moment of opportunity for intervention. We've established the infrastructure they can use, and we have not gained our full technological strength. So we've hit a threshold, a predictable threshold, in our evolution. This is evolution. It happens sooner or later. All young races are discovered sooner or later by the larger universe. And this is the time in which we live where that discovery is taking place. Again, I'm giving you this from a larger perspective because once you begin to study the Allies briefings and the New Message teachings about the greater community, you begin to see things more from the outside looking in rather than only from the inside looking out. You begin to get the eyes to see and you become free of the kind of fantasies and myths that we project out into space. And you become immune to the kind of persuasions that have been cast upon the world by the intervention itself in many, many ways. And we can talk about some of those ways. This is a great, this is a great and necessary education. It's not, can't be summed up in one interview or in a few remarks that I could possibly make. It's a journey. It's a journey of discovery. We've lived in this greater community of life the whole time of our physical existence. And we're waking up to its reality, which is not the reality that we've created. Just the idea that we live in a non-human universe is a very sobering thing. It's not governed by human values, human ethics, human presumption. How are we going to deal with that? How can we understand that? How can we prepare for that? You know, as a warring set of tribes on Earth, we will not be free in the universe in the future. We will fall prey to intervention of one kind or another. It's predictable. And we will be overcome without firing a shot. This is a long-term colonization project that we're facing. They're willing to take years and decades to accomplish it, to achieve their goals. But their success is not assured. When humanity begins to wake up to what is happening in our world, in our lives, we have the power to drive this away. Not even by force, but by consensus. The intervention in the world today is relying entirely upon our submission and our willingness to give in to it. It has no power to take us by force, nor can it do this. And this is part of the Allies' briefings to explain why this is in the clearest possible terms. And this is why we have to know something about life in the universe, or we would never be able to figure this out. We would think that everything out there is like us and functions like us. But that is not what we're facing. That is not the greater reality that we're entering. I mentioned before that each of us possesses a deeper knowledge, a more refined intelligence, beneath our social intelligence, beneath the intelligence that we have created since the day we were born, which is our worldly mind, there's a deeper mind within us that knows exactly who we are, why we're here, and what we have to face, and how we will prepare for that. And this is a major thrust of my teaching because if knowledge did not live within us, we would be acting merely on presumption and belief, and that would not save us from anything, even from ourselves. That would not save us. 
There's another reason why the intervention is here in the world today. And that is because we are destroying the value of the world. It's biological value. We're degrading the world at a phenomenal pace, changing its climate, undermining its resources, making it less habitable, less useful to anyone in the universe. And that probably is the biggest motivation that has brought the intervention here at this time. What the new message calls the great ways of change. Changing climate, changing environment, political, social upheaval. The two biggest events in human history occurring right now and they are connected to each other. Entering a new world reality, declining world, and defacing intervention from the universe around us. Those are the two biggest events in history. And in fact, that's the reason why so many of us are even here in the world. The people who will hear my words and read this interview are people who have a connection to life in the universe. We call them greater community people. They have an innate spiritual connection to life in the universe. Whether they be stargazers or astronomers, they all have a beautiful connection with life in the universe. It's built into them. It's part of their blueprint for being here. And these are the first people who are going to respond to this reality. Whether they see it correctly or not, however they may envision it, they are connected to it. And that's a powerful thing to know, because why would we spend so much time dealing with something that is so odd and peculiar, generating so much disapproval from others, even social disengagement from others, unless we had some kind of innate connection. So the first to respond to the Allies of Humanity briefings, the new message for humanity, are people who will have this greater community connection. And no matter how they see this reality, they are connected to it. It is part of their destiny. And there are millions and millions of people who have this greater community connection. And they're the ones I have to reach. They're the ones who have to have this greater community education. So they'll fall prey to the intervention because they want it. They hope for it. They believe it. They think it's going to save them. They think it's going to give them everything the humanity cannot give itself. They're the most vulnerable to persuasion here and inducement. This is a very serious matter. I mean, you have to be a person who's not just fooling around in the face of this. This is the future of humanity right here. The freedom of humanity. It goes beyond corrupt leaders, goes beyond economic policies, goes beyond social engagements, national engagements. This is going to determine the future and freedom of every person on earth, both now and those to come. That's how big this is. I think it's important to know that. If we get this wrong, if we don't see this correctly, don't think you can earn your freedom later. The allies of humanity are made up of individuals from several different worlds. Each of these worlds was overcome by intervention, and in each of these worlds they had to fight for their freedom to regain their own sovereignty at great cost to their populations. So they are the ones who can best tell us about intervention and how it has to be recognized, how it has to be discerned, how it has to be resisted, and how it has to be overcome. We're at the early stages of the intervention now. We don't have to fight them for our freedom. But we do need to oppose their presence here if we're going to establish our own rules of engagement as to who enters our world and what they can do here. Because this is our house. The intervention has even posed itself as our ancient ancestors here to come back to protect us, to reclaim us. You hear these things. So many different stories, so much falsehood. 
tell the native peoples anything and they'll give in. Look at the history of intervention in the world. What happened to the native peoples who could not see or discern who was coming over the horizon in their tall ships? Who was stepping onto their land? What they were really there to do? Whether they came in a warlike manner or in a peaceful manner, what were they really there to do? What did they promise? What did they offer? What were they really there to do? Let the lessons of intervention from our own world history, our own national histories, teach us the wisdom that we need to bring to this greater phenomenon, because we are now the native peoples of this one world, all of us, facing intervention from forces we do not recognize or understand. Are we just replaying history here on a global scale? Let us not be foolish and think that promises of wealth, power, or spiritual fulfillment can be just given to us as a promise by forces we do not even know, who will not reveal themselves, their activities, or their purpose to us. This is where humanity can grow up. In kind of an adolescent stage, you know, the human family as a whole, I mean, there are wise individuals everywhere, but as a whole, we're sort of adolescent. Everyone's out for themselves. They're competing with, every, with each other, fighting each other, even over trivial things. Even our religions are fighting each other. I mean, we've been fighting each other the whole way. And now we come upon a threshold that's going to require us to unite for our own defense against a greater force that can undermine us subtly over time, but very deeply. That's the intervention. This is why the Allies of Humanity were called here to give their testimony. Not to interfere with us, not to land on our surface of our world, but to give us this wisdom. For we would never achieve it on our own. How could we? No one on Earth knows what's going on in the universe. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't know. That has to be revealed to us. And that is what the Allies of Humanity briefings are about. Can you explain to us uh, about uh, the activities of the intervention? How are they achieving or trying to, 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 to gain control of the planet? Being a very small force or set of forces, because there's more than one group here, um, they have to use the powers of their persuasion and the fact that they represent higher technology, uh, which is very impressive to certain people. There are four fundamental activities of the intervention, and the Allies of Humanity briefings deal with this in great detail, which I cannot do here today. <clears throat> the first is to establish connections with people in positions of power and influence in government, governments, commerce, and religion. Remember, the intervention wants to remain hidden. They're doing everything they can to remain hidden. Even as they fly through our skies, and witnessed by airline pilots and military pilots and millions of people on the ground, they want to be hidden. So to influence people in positions of power by offering them technology, unlimited power, or predominance in the world. I mean, some people cannot resist this. You can think of leaders of certain countries who at this moment could not resist these temptations. Very powerful. The next is to establish hidden bases on Earth from which they can operate. Since they cannot breathe their atmosphere, they cannot expose themselves to our biological environment, they have to seek places to hide their craft. If they come and go from Earth, that gets noticeable. If they live in their oceans, it could be hard to detect them. Or in mountainous areas and places. But they need a presence here to do what they're doing. And they need off-planet prep in our solar system as well help them. This is a long-range project for them. They don't live near us. In fact, the intervention lives in space. They don't really have planets of origin. 
he just represents other planets who could not be doing this here without serious problems arising for them. The third avenue is to affect our religious impulses and aspirations by emphasizing that we're totally corrupt and we cannot redeem ourselves, but they are not corrupt, they're enlightened and they can redeem us. Look at the history of intervention in our world, how the intervening forces, the European powers, would turn their people against their native leaders, citing all the abuses and inequality and other oppression, everything that the native peoples are experiencing. That's how you get the native peoples to work for you, because you need them to work for you. This is what is happening in the world today. You know, a lot of New Age thinking is very much from the intervention. The idea that everything happens for a purpose, where did that come from? That everything that happens to you happens for a purpose? That's what's called pacification. That's not education. That makes you open to everything. Oh, whatever happens, I'll be open to that. I'll be open to this. I'll be open to that. I'll be open to intervention. Great. It's here for a purpose. Must be happening for a purpose. Everything in life happens for my purpose, for my well being. No sensible person would ever think like that. And no person's ever been out in the world and done anything would ever think like that. But many people think like that. So that makes them an easy target of the intervention itself. And just our religious aspirations of bliss and peace and equanimity, I mean, Whatever happened to service and contribution, right? And giving and personal sacrifice and whatever happened to the core eternal values of religion, they've been, trans they've been displaced by the search for personal desire and equanimity and peace and happiness. That's strange. That takes people out of life. The very people who could be sensitive enough to discern the presence of the intervention, who could be free enough culturally to face it and oppose it, are the first ones to be turned. They become easy targets for this kind of persuasion. Give them everything, or promise them, every, they're not giving them anything, promise them everything they want that they can't get here on earth, and they will become your advocates and your supporters. This is real. This is happening. I'm one of the few, maybe the only spiritual teacher in the world who's speaking out against the intervention. There are other people speaking out against it, but their numbers are very small. Why is that? What is it that makes us so easy to convince by forces we don't even understand, for whom we have no real relationship with? A question. And the answer to that question is the powerful knowledge that lives within us, the part of us that cannot be mis deceived or manipulated. This is presented in both the Allies of Humanity briefings as a core facet of humanity's ability to resist and overcome intervention. Because people feel weak and small, they keep wanting to follow something. And if they're persuaded that their leaders are corrupt, their institutions are corrupt, then they'll seek leaders and institutions elsewhere in the universe. You create a vacuum that gets filled by the intervention. The allies of humanity have a total hands off about us and our affairs. They're only telling us where our strengths and weaknesses are. They're telling us who's here, why they're here, what they're doing, and what we need to do to prepare. That is it. They're not going to come here and save us because no free nation would ever do that. They'd have to take over our world to do that. And they're not willing to do that because that, that contravenes our own freedom and responsibility. But they will give us the things that we cannot know for ourselves. 
the wisdom, the perspective, the information we cannot gain on our own to help us do that. So we do need help, but we do not need intervention. So their presence here, to me, represents ethical contact with life in the universe. Give us your wisdom. Show us how we can survive in this greater community of life. Show us how we can be free in this greater community of life. But don't come here and start trying to take over government, religion, and commerce. Taking people against their will. This is a very serious thing. Thanks, Marshall. Uh, I think you mentioned something about uh, uh, human conflict that the, the intervention is promoting this. Can you uh, talk ab ab about that and explain uh, why it's important that we, we do not uh, give in to these temptations of uh, being divided and how can we um, achieve enough uh, or enough unity among, amongst the human, uh, the, the human race? Well, there's a number of manifestations of this. First of all, I mean, divide and conquer is you get the native races to oppose each other, fight each other, diminish each other. Obviously, it makes it easy to overcome them in the, in the aftermath. So the intervention wants our eyes on each other critically. And part of that is for humanity to lose faith in its leaders and its institutions. Because once you do that, most people will seek for leaders and institutions elsewhere. Because we need leaders and institutions. We're not going to all just govern ourselves out there. But we're too big. The world is too big now for that. An example of that is, you know, up until maybe 20 years ago, there was legitimate UFO research. But most of that research has been overtaken by conspiracy theories which again turns us against each other, turns us against our leaders, turns against our institutions. And certainly generating war and conflict or promoting it in some way or influencing it in some way sets us against each other. It weakens the strongest nations in the world. Why has America gotten involved in intractable conflicts? Because it could not win, but which weakens it where it loses stature in the eyes of the world, sets its own population conflict with itself. I mean, the strategy here, this isn't just, we make our own mistakes, certainly, and we are full of corruption, certainly, but the intervention is here to turn us against each other. And it's succeeding. More fracturing in the world today, Old alliances breaking up, populations are suffering because of the great ways of change, loss of resources, loss of wealth, loss of opportunity. This is, a, this is the environment in which humanity can be overtaken. We're not that strong and we're becoming weaker as we go forward. But we have the strength to overcome intervention. I'm going to really emphasize that as we go forward. Can you talk about that? Uh, how, 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 what's our strength and how can we overcome something that appears so, so difficult? Uh, you know, the, these races, they have this great, greater technology. Uh, and how can we, when they have these uh, more developed mind abilities of influence, how can we counteract or, or, or neutralize that? Well, let's talk about um, influence and consciousness first. The importance of learning the way of knowledge is that who you are is not your social mind, the mind that has been created and influenced since the day you were born. And the deeper mind within you is the eternal part of you. This is at the core of all religion and beyond religion. The deeper mind cannot be deceived it knows who you are, why you're here, and what is happening in the world, and how to respond. You cannot influence that mind from any force, be it human or 
otherworldly. It's only responsible to God. It's your connection to God. It's a connection that was never broken from God. It's your lifeline to God. Whether you're religious or not, many people are say we're spiritual but not religious, but it's all the same. The intervention cannot overcome knowledge. So, and this of course is the answer to all conspiracy theories, this is the answer to human manipulation. I mean, this is really where people become powerful because they have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, they cannot be deceived. So at the very core of us is the answer. It's not like we're going to create a better technology than they have. No, but we don't need to. They're a tiny force in the world. We're a bunch of wild, restive natives who keep fighting each other, but if we turn our attention on them, they have to leave. And because conquest is not allowed in the universe, this part of our universe. Elsewhere it is, but not around where we live. It always has to look like uh, they have our approval in being here. And that's why they try to gain our approval, because they need it to justify their presence here. Because there's other eyes watching them. And if it looks like we're accepting their presence, and you want their presence, that validates their whole approach to being here. Again, something we would never know about. This presented in both the Allies of Humanity briefings and more completely in the New Message teaching from the world. So we don't know what's going on beyond our shores. And this is what makes understanding interventions so difficult. I mean, we don't know what motivates them, what limits them, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, why they do what they do, why they don't do other things. Because we don't know what's going on in the universe beyond our shores. So that's why the new message has given us the whole book, Life in the Universe, the reality and spirituality of life in the universe, and a more recent book on the greater community, to begin to give us not only the reality of contact, but the reality of life that generates contact, which we cannot produce ourselves. This has to be, a, in this case, a gift from the divine, or a gift from the allies of humanity. Because otherwise, we don't know what's happening, why it's happening, what it means, or what to do. The four fundamental questions. What is happening? Why is it happening? What does it mean? What do we do? We don't have an answer for any of those. We can keep talking about UFOs or visitation, but we don't know what that is, why it is, what it means, how do we prepare. So this is a critical need. Our greater community education must go along with our emergence into a greater community of life. Or we will not be a free race in the future. And no matter what country you live in, no matter how oppressive it might be, you have no comparison for what it would be like to live in a non-free world in the universe. So, clearly, the work of many people in the world, my work, is to build human freedom and responsibility. The intervention is here to break those down using our own tendencies, our own grievances against each other. And I should also mention, you know, one of the ways that the intervention sets us against each other is in national conflicts. Because um, those individuals in positions of power, commerce, governance, and religion can be very supportive of these conflicts, depending on what's influencing them. What influences people is an important thing. We influence each other all the time. And that's why knowledge is so important to us, because it can't be influenced except by God. Or by knowledge in each other. So we're at a critical threshold. And the future of humanity rests upon this threshold. 
and we don't have a lot of time. We've already lost a lot of time. The invention's been operating in its current phase for about 40 years. There was the initial contact experience, and those represented some positive races too, trying to alert us to the dangers of our own nuclear technology, uh, but they were supplanted by the intervention. So there are no good races here now. They're all different groups here for the same intention. They're all part of the intervention. You can't get into a good guy, bad guy thing here. Humanity, and this is part of the Allies Humanity Briefings, humanity is not ready for contact. We're too adolescent. We're too divided. There's no one to speak for all of us. We're too warlike. We don't have the species maturity yet to deal with the complexities, sophistication of the greater community. So the Allies say no one should be visiting you, absolutely, for any reason. All they could do is send you information that might be helpful to you, but they should not be here on Earth. Point blank, no exceptions. No one's going to come and save us, and those who say they do are really here to, to establish themselves here. We have to save ourselves. Every race in the universe, whoever gained freedom, had to save themselves. They might have gotten assistance from others, but they had to save themselves. We have to do that. So, this is a big reality confrontation for us, the intervention. It's a necessary one. It can actually be beneficial to us because an intervention taking place over the entire world is the only thing that can really unite a divided and conflicted humanity in its own defense. War would cease on this planet if that was the growing understanding. We need each other and all the resources that we have as individuals, as nations and cultures to be able to establish ourselves as a free race and to resist intervention. And a big part of establishing yourself as a free race is resisting intervention. Because a world of this value, governed by reckless, warlike, intelligent life, um, is going to face ongoing intervention at one level or another. But not conquest, because the world's too valuable for conquest. So, this is a very different way of seeing this than what many people uh, are assuming or believing. They have no way to, I, I, I'm compassionate for them because they, they don't have this information to inform them. And if you look at this purely from a preferential standpoint, you of course want this to be a good thing. Visitation is a good thing. They're here to help us because we're important in the universe. And everyone loves us because we're lovable and we need their help and they're gonna come help us. That's a, I mean, that would be great. It's just not true. And it will never be true. The history of our world has never been true. And our world is a microcosm of what life is like in the universe. So, I think the great benefit is here that what will unite us, the only thing that can unite us, is something like this. But how many people are aware of this intervention and can see it for what it really is? Can we see it for what it really is? Do we have the eyes to see? Are we just going to look at this like everything else as some way to profit, gain profit for ourselves? There's no profit in the intervention. No one will profit, from the richest to the poorest. So, this is something that can bring greater cooperation, greater recognition of how important we are to each other here on Earth. 
Even our old enemies are all adversaries. We need them too. We don't want any nation or state to follow the intervention to avoid war on earth. So there's a huge incentive. Once you begin to see this clearly, there's a huge incentive for human cooperation in the cessation of war. Fighting each other is the last thing we want to be doing. We have a much greater opponent at our doorstep, and we will not fight them with weapons, but with determination, cooperation, and the power we carry. Remember, the intervention is a tiny little force in the world. You got seven and a half billion restive human beings who'd rather not be enslaved. But who's got the power in that scenario? But as long as we keep fighting ourselves and the intervention supporting us in doing that on a personal level, on a national level, um, then we will not see, we will not know, and we will not respond. So we won't be responsible. So really the ball is in our court. And even if we were to thwart this intervention, drive it away, there'll be another attempt at intervention, maybe in a different way. One of the ways that we will be overtaken is making us dependent upon foreign technology. Trinkets from space to dazzle the native peoples. A gadget, some, some little sparkly thing. This is how intervention has been carried out in the world. In so many places. Do not accept technology from anyone from beyond this world. They are planting the seeds of our future dependence. No exceptions. Do not take gifts from anyone in the universe. Material gifts. Sowing the seeds of our future dependence. That's what the Ali's briefings are telling us. Adamantly. Don't do that. Who in the world can resist that, though? So we are, it's our weakness that they're preying upon, not our strength. The Allies are calling for our strength. That our strength must overcome our weakness so we lose everything. Everything. Everything good that's ever been created in our world will be lost. If the intervention is successful. No one will benefit. So, we've all come into this world at this time for a greater purpose. It's not like, gee, I wish I wasn't here at this time. No, you're here per appropriately. Everyone, no matter who you are, come to the world at this great turning point where the future and destiny of humanity will be decided the decades to come. It's a powerful time to be here if you could be connected to your deeper purpose to the power of knowledge that lives within you. Thank you very much. So I would like to ask you, uh, you mentioned that it is really important that we become, uh, that we don't become part of those uh, networks of trade in the universe, those collectives. And that is really adamant that we become a free race, such as the Allies. How can we achieve that? What are the requirements for this? This is a, a very good question. Well, there are three basic requirements for freedom in the universe. There's unity, there's self-sufficiency, and there's discernment and discretion, which go together. Unity means a nation, a world, the population is not constantly fighting and struggling with itself over territory or resources. Okay, because that just makes you so vulnerable to outside intervention. Um, and it, you're destroying the value of your own world as well as the well-being of your own peoples. 
Self-sufficiency means that the world can supply us what we need. We do not require or depend upon foreign powers to give us essential things. This is very important because when you're self-sufficient, you can be discerning about other powers in the universe. You don't really need them. And you want to be careful that your resource is not going to be um, utilized or taken from you by other powers. So you become a responsible participant in a universe full of intelligent life. Um, discernment is very important. Discernment is the ability to see what you're looking at, fundamentally, and not to overlay that with your desires and your fears, not even with your love or your emotion, just seeing. What am I looking at here? The eyes to see. What am I hearing? You have the ears to hear. What really is there? Not what you want to be there, or hope that will be there. Or afraid will be there. And discretion. I mean, we're broadcasting all of our conflicts, our foolishness, everything out into our local universe. A discreet observer can learn all about our culture, our weaknesses, our tendencies, our corruption, our violence, our tragedies, our suffering, our starvation, everything. Tune into planet Earth, foolishly broadcasting out into space. We haven't learned how not to do that. So we do that. Free races are rare in the universe. Most races are large, technological, or if they're really remote, they could be very primitive. But once nations begin to trade and interact with each other, they become more like each other. Um, very controlling. I mean, there's not a lot of individual freedom in these large, these large nations. They have to control their populations. They have to control everything. And they become more like each other because they're dominating each other. If I need something from your world in order for my technology to work, I have to go along with you. If I can no longer support myself with what I have, then I need what you have. And this is how war has been overcome in our local universe, is through a very tight kind of network of essential commerce. But it's very tightly controlled, and within that, free nations have to establish themselves and insulate themselves from the outside. That's one of the reasons why the allies, the individuals, uh, cannot give the names of their worlds or reveal uh, what they're doing here, because um, they're, they're going against those rules of engagement for free nations. You could be a free nation, you just can't interfere with what we're doing around you. Well, the Allies are doing that. And that's why after the first set of briefings, the intervention became aware of the Allies' presence and began to pursue them. And have pursued them ever since. And so the second set of two sets of briefings, actually three sets of briefings, have come from afar. Whereas the first set of briefing was within our own solar system, from a hidden location. So, um, to be a free nation in the universe is, you have to really uh, become mature and united and discerning and discreet and self-sufficient. Well, we're losing our self-sufficiency with each passing day. We're depleting the earth at a phenomenal rate. Ever-growing number of people drinking from a slowly shrinking well, I mean, that's not going to have a good outcome. We're broadcasting all of our conflicts and dissensions, problems out into space indiscriminately, so there's no discretion. We're not discerning about who and what is flying in our skies. And human unity, which has always been an important goal, is going through a time of fragmentation right now, as the resources of the world become more scarce, more expensive, um, cooperation, in many places, is breaking down. So, we're failing the three requirements for freedom in the universe currently. But those things can all be changed over time. And I think you would need to be aware of the challenge from beyond to create the incentive 
for those things to be altered and changed into a positive direction. Those are non-negotiable requirements for freedom in the universe. There's no way around them. The allies uh, are actually operating according to a greater coordination, a spiritual coordination. That's what has brought them here. They weren't sent by their governments. They were, they're here for a greater spiritual purpose, which is to attempt to protect humanity's freedom, sovereignty, and self-determination as it emerges into this larger arena of intelligent life in the universe. That's the purpose of the Allies of Humanity Briefings. It's in part the purpose of the new message to the world. Though the new message is much bigger and much more complete and deals with many more things than the intervention, that is essential to its purpose. And we live a time of great consequence right now. Time of great calling, great spiritual calling. Time of great meaning. Time of great importance about what people do with their lives and what they serve, what they respond to in their nations, their cultures, and in the whole world. We're a world community now. We're a fledgling world community, but you know, we are talking to each other all over the world. We're looking at each other all over the world. We're interacting, we're trading, we're visiting, we're we're carrying on engagement all over the world. Never happened before to this degree. So we have a lot of promise. We've kept knowledge and religion and spirituality alive in our world. It has died out so many other places or never existed to begin with. I said earlier that we live in a non-human universe where freedom is rare. Why is freedom rare? Because it's hard to establish and to maintain. So easy just to fall in line with those around you, consolidate power, dominate your populations. That's the easy way. The hard way is freedom is messy. Freedom is difficult. Freedom requires you elevate your population. It requires restraint. It requires compassion. It requires so many different important qualities in any kind of being. And many young races like ours emerged in the greater community never just succumbed. They just were overtaken. But only after they built enough infrastructure, usually, for the intervening race to use, because no intervening race wants to have to build a whole world's infrastructure. But the natives build the infrastructure in this case, because it's a whole world. And we're doing that. But we don't have to do that for them. So let it be very clear, this is the world planet of our origin. This is our gift from God. <laughs> no one else has rights here. No one else owns this place. No one else is our ancient ancestors. Okay. You have to be very clear, these things are all being undermined right now. It's part of the interventions, persuasion, the pacification program, to pacify humanity. Make us give in, give up, make us believe. It's a powerful force in our world. Look at who we elect as our leaders, and you can see how powerful a force that is. So, I think all of us have to become allies of humanity. Because there is competition now for who will rule the world. The intervention is a colonization project, a long-term, multi-step process of colonization. They want to preserve us as a workforce. They want to preserve the assets of the world. They're not going to come and destroy the place. So. These are the things we need to know, because if we don't know these, we will not see the picture clearly. We will not know what is happening, why it's happening, what it means, and what we must do. So regarding what we must do, there are some very important things here. The first step is awareness and education. 
Let us be aware that we are facing an intervention. It is not a visitation. It fails all the requirements for visitation. And it exemplifies intervention in all respects. Education, we need to learn about life in the universe. What can teach us about that? Well, in this case, our source, God, is teaching us about that through the new message of humanity. You can believe it or not, but before you deny it, you better read it first to find out. Because only God can do that. Only God knows everything about life in the universe. You know, there's not long-distance space travel in the universe because it doesn't work. There's not multi-dimensional travel in the universe because it doesn't work. So most races are very local in their reach, their influence. There's so many things we, we have to learn anew that's going to, you know, this is not like watching a, a movie. So our education here is really important. And when you begin to have it, things start to make sense. You begin to understand, okay, this is why, this is what is happening. This is why it's happening. This is what it looks like. This is how it's manifested. How are we going to prepare? That's the fourth question. Why it's happening? What is happening? Why it's happening? What does it mean? How do we prepare? Well, nobody knows how to prepare. That is why the Allies of Humanity briefings were given, along with the New Message Humanity, so we can learn to prepare. And at the center of this preparation is the power of knowledge that is within us. It can give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear. It is internal, so it's fearless. It cannot be overcome by influence or persuasion. Can it be overcome? by grief or loss, tragedy, the core of our strength, our purpose, our destiny, and our reason for being in the world. Things that cannot be discerned at a level of the personality. So this, is this a tragedy for humanity? Could be. Or does it represent an upgrade for humanity? I'll go with the upgrade, because that's what it really is. People don't advance because they want to. They advance because they must, facing real circumstances, real challenges, real needs. That's so how all things of value have been established. Not from wishing or wanting, but from what must be done. And you hear things that must be done. You must recognize the intervention as intervention. You must gain an education about it and about life in the universe and what is centered here, what its strengths and weaknesses are, how to respond, what to listen to within ourselves so we know how to be strong and powerful rather than weak and easily manipulated. It's a challenge to each person who can respond. That is why this is focused on the individual, not trying to change governments or trying to change whole populations of people. This is a calling for individuals, particularly people who have a greater community connection, who has natural affinity for life in the universe. It's a good place to start when we talk about preparation. Can you talk about, uh, the, because it, from all of this, it seems that the intervention seems to be uh, a very respectable opponent to us. So it, we might feel at first when reading the briefings from the Allies that it's such a, 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 a almost impossible task. So how, how, what can you tell us about that? Uh, um, because we might think that they are invincible no matter what. So can you, can you explain a bit more? What are their weaknesses, for example? Well, one of their weaknesses is, is that they're non-military, and their power is persuasion. And persuasion can be easily resisted if you can recognize it for what it is. 
They want you to think they're all powerful. That's why they've done mil displays over military bases and things like this to show we're powerful. You can't you can't resist us. But these are this is like the peacock opening its tails to make you think it's bigger than it is. They're small. They have no real physical power here. And as soon as people become aware of who and what they are, then they have they have no influence anymore. So the two problems here is that they try to make themselves appear invincible, which they're not, and we don't understand the nature of, and purpose of our own power as individuals and collectively. We're strong, they're weak. But they want us to think that we're weak and they're strong. But that's not reality. And to other forces that are watching this intervention, if it looks like humanity is resisting their presence, they will have to leave. They will be withdrawn. The allies of briefings will describe to you exactly why this is the case. Something, again, we could not know for ourselves. We do not know how things work beyond our borders. We only assume from what we understand here on Earth, and that is not enough. But we do know what intervention is from our own history. We know its outcome. We know how it's carried out. We know a lot of things that can be very helpful to us and our wisdom here on Earth. So anyone who's interested in visitation or UFOs or life in the universe, do not come to a conclusion until you read the Alleys and Humanity Briefings. I call it, that's my calling for you. After that, you can come to any decision you want. I'm not controlling your decision, but I want you to know this. I'm an ally of humanity. I'm not an ally of the intervention. There's no neutral ground here. You can't play both sides. You can't play the situation for advantages. There's a stark decision about who and what will determine our fate and future. When life is this simple, it's hard. It's tough. It's demanding. But that's part of its gift. Uh, what are some realistic goal, goals we can set for, for us to, to resist the intervention? Well, as I said, the beginning is awareness and education. Let's become aware of what we're dealing with here. Can I just know this for what it is, without any preferences? The education is essential. You can't get it at any university. It's been given to us now to the degree to which we need it. We don't need to know the names of races out there. and We need to know what is happening right on the surface of our world regarding our encounter with life in the universe. That's what we need to know. That is what's essential. If we miss that, we're in deep trouble. So again, this is my invitation for anyone reading this or hearing my words to explore the Allies Humanity Briefings. They're offered free online. Explore them. Think about the history of our world as a demonstration of life in the universe. Because nature is nature. Intervention is part of nature. Competition is part of nature. Freedom is around the universe because it's hard to achieve. And hard to maintain, but well worth it. No one ever became free by accident. And no one ever became wise by accident. This is the great challenge of our time. This and the condition of our climate and our world. Those two things have the power to destroy human civilization. So that is the great challenge of our time, in my view.
There are other important things in the world, but we can't neglect those two great challenges. It's time to grow up. It's time to realize that our world is valued by others. And that if we're going to preserve it as our planet of origin, we're going to have to take very good care of this planet and its resources, and we're going to have to establish terms of engagement regarding anyone who comes here, just like any other established world in the universe. That's what's required. It requires thousands of different efforts and contributions, but we have to know what we're dealing with to engender the commitment, the dedication, and the willingness to take on a greater community education, which is what is being provided here for the first time in our world. Can you can you um, talk about the uh, alien abductions and the hybrid? Uh, what do you think of those things, and how is the, are those things ethical? Are those things good for us? All right. Well. Uh, none of those things are good for us. To take people against their will, to use your genetics, to destroy their personal lives, <laughs> it's not good for anyone. And the purpose is to create hybrid individuals who can help carry out the plan of the intervention here on Earth. People often ask, well, are elected officials, are they hybrids? No. It's those who advise them that could be the hybrids. Very persuasive, very intuitive. Look like us, but aren't us. It's a long-term project. It's, not like, it's going to take, it takes a century for the intervention to accomplish its goals. It's worth it to them. We get to preserve the planet and at least part of the human population for their own purposes. It's worth a long-term project. That's how these things are undertaken. And at the same time, it doesn't look like conquest. It looks like we welcomed them and allowed them to move in. And even wanted them to move in. If we deteriorate the world too far, we'll be desperate and we'll want them to move in. So, even hearing these things is a challenge and a confrontation, but it's also a calling. This is calling for who we are and why we are really in the world at this time. We're just here to try to be comfortable and have a few pleasurable items. Is that what brought us to the world? Is that what our purpose and destiny is? If that is your purpose and destiny, your soul will starve, because that's not why it's here. Each of us came here to make a difference, to serve something, not what we wanted, but what was needed, at a small scale, a big scale, any scale. This is the challenge. This is the calling. The values of humanity are calling us to become responsible and determined and united in the face of what, we're, what is happening in our world today. There's no escape, there's no luxury, there's no preferred life that's going to really work. There's no running away, there's no hiding. This is it. This is it. It's the best thing that can happen to a weak and struggling humanity. There's a big demand that will require greatness from us. We have to be the architects of our own freedom in a universe where freedom is rare. That is the challenge. How can we be prepare for this, this whole new reality of contact? How can we individually prepare for this? Well, pre preparation, of course, is the fourth question, and that's where studying UFOs could never go, because it has no answer for that. Um, 
where we have the briefings and we have the new message teachings on life in the universe, um, the greater community, uh, and we have steps to knowledge, which is how we gain contact with our deeper intelligence. Bigger than intuition it is. I'm not talking about intuition here. Talking about a deeper intelligence within us that is fully prepared to deal with this world that we're facing. So, steps to knowledge is a core part of the preparation. If we just operate from assumptions and belief, it's not going to work. We need to be inner directed. If we're not inner directed, we'll be outer directed. And in this case, that is not a good thing. No one's going to come and save us, and those who claim to do so, uh, who plant themselves in our world, uh, represent the problem we're facing. So, our preparation is laid out before us. And for all those millions of people who have a greater community connection inherent within them, this will be very important, very confirming. They'll begin to understand why they have this, why they feel this, why this has been important in their life, why they and not others are, are responding to this. It's the reality of life in the universe, now on our shores. The blessing is with us, but we must respond have the courage and the humility to respond, to set aside our preconceived notions, ideas or things we believed in before, to put those at risk for a greater truth, for a greater reality, a greater purpose. It's a challenge facing anyone who has a greater destiny in the world. They have to outgrow their ideas and beliefs to begin to take the journey towards fulfilling that destiny. In its odd kind of way, the intervention can redeem us to ourselves and each other if we can recognize it and respond appropriately. Beyond that, we must make it known that we do not welcome visitation from anyone unless the world community has agreed to it and it can meet our own requirements. We set the terms of engagement, we as human beings, not as individuals, but as human beings. Do we do that? We are reckless, vulnerable, and confused. So we have to hear this message in your heart. It's not simply a bunch of ideas that I'm presenting to you. It's, it's reality. It's not my reality. It's not what I want. I didn't make this up to make myself feel better. This is a huge challenge. This is a this is a fire drill for the whole planet. But this has our name on it. This is our time. Neglect this and we will our future will be lost as we go forward. And those are the stakes. And high stakes can bring out great things in people if they can respond. It can be very scary at first, it can be very upsetting at first. People may resist, people do resist. That's not what they want to hear, they want to hear what they want to hear. But reality is not like that. Reality is facing what is, squarely, and saying, what must I do? Is there any any uh, other topic you wanted to 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 address uh, for before I close the interview? Well, again, I want to emphasize the spirituality of knowledge. It is what our spirituality really is. It's not just belief in saints and gurus and 
avatars and saviors and it's not just churches and mosques and temples it's the spirit that lives within us that we brought with us into the world and that will go beyond the world with us and that deeper knowledge that we carry which is related to our ability to know things profoundly even beyond our understanding is a thing that will save us individually and the allies of humanity call it the most powerful force in the universe so if we're carrying the most powerful force in the universe within us then we should take the steps to knowledge we should find the way to find it and that has been given to us as a gift to the world I mean, it wouldn't be, make any sense for me to provide the warning, the exigency of this, if the preparation wasn't also provided. To be shown something this big and overwhelming without a way out of the jungle, a way out of this dilemma, would be unfair, kind of cruel. But the way has been given. This is the way that other free nations in the universe have warded off or fought their way out of intervention because intervention is very common in the universe for emerging worlds such as ours emerging humanity is emerging race in the universe so if we're going to be free we're going to have to earn it we can do that without war but it will require immense determination cooperation and trust in ourselves and each other. And only a great need in the world could make that happen. And we have such a great need. So the blessing is with us, the challenge is with us, the gift lives within us. Let us proceed. Let us respond. Let us take the journey into a greater life, a greater universe, and a greater meaning for our existence here. That is my prayer.